part is dry now so I've got some blue mixed here and I'm going to just do a wash glaze over the top getting it much more intense up into the corners and letting it fade out. Just moving with light brush strokes, light quick brush strokes over, over the piece so that I don't lift too much of what I have underneath, but I add some more depth to what I've got. That's going to take a little while to dry, but meanwhile, this stuff down here, I haven't touched and it's dry, so that means I can get to work on defining that seaweed a bit. So I'm starting with some more intense but muted blue greens, more like a grayish green I guess. And I've got my size zero brush. I'm starting to add some shadow and shaping to the foreground bits of kelp. The way these things are shaped are sort of like these big shiny bubbly carrots <laughs> and then the leafy part has these striations So I'm creating shading along these air pocket bubbles, rounding them out. thing I can do to create highlights is I take my damp brush, I've just got a little bit of water on it, and with this little circular scrubbing motion I can lift some of the paint and create a soft rounded shaped highlight. And then to get it even more white dab away at the liquid. The re-wet paint. Uh, I dab at that with a paper towel. Okay. 
and that lifts some more of the color. I lifted a little bit too much on that one, so I need to repaint it. Now in the tangled kelp shapes here, I'm not going to sharp edge define all of them. I want to let some of it fade back into this more subtly shaded stuff. So I want to let it blend into the texture bits that were created from the first washes because those hint at more distant and shadowed elements. I don't want to have everything just on one flat foreground paint, fore, foreground plane. I want to have things that are closer to the foreground and some that have receded into the back. And this gives more depth to the piece. It gives more interest to the viewer to focus on separate elements and also gives them some place to really uh, rest their eyes because you don't want to have too much warring for attention. I mean, you can do that. That's a different style than I do, I guess. It's more of a decorative style. And in a way, I, I edge towards that frequently because I have so much detail and interest going on in my paintings that sometimes it feels a little bit like that. But I try to, uh, I try to give the viewer focal points and I try to give contrast and create areas where I guide the eye through the experience of the painting. Now in this, I don't want any of this seaweed stuff that I'm doing to be too attention grabbing because in the end, this is all background. This is all background stuff. It's all supporting character cast. The main star and focus of everything is going to be the mermaid, of course. So in the end, I want to keep all of this softer and more muted and maybe not as brightly colored as I would initially want it to be. You hear artists talk about the ugly phases of a painting. For me, I mean, it can mean many things. Sometimes it's, it's just a place where you don't really know what's going on with the painting yet. But for me, what creates the ugly phase is that I'm at a part of the painting where the foreground and the background haven't yet all been defined. And so since I work on the background first frequently, if my background doesn't look really stunning and the colors are not popping and bright, then the painting just doesn't seem like it has any focus yet, but that's because I haven't gotten to the focus. That's because I haven't painted my focus. <laughs> and in fact, it's a good thing when your background doesn't look like it has enough focus because in that situation, the main star of the piece has yet to come to the stage. And so if there's too much going on with the background, then once I do paint the foreground, it's all going to look very confusing and it's going to have too many things that are trying to grab the viewer's eye all at once and when that happens you lose any sense of a coherent composition. So I'm using a wider brush now to sort of dry brush this more distant kelp over here. I sort of had the hint and shadow of these shapes in one of the uh, earlier phases, but I'm darkening them now. 
but I still want them to look sort of blurred and fuzzed out, which is why I'm doing this as dry brush rather than just a simple glaze. Now is my upper part dry? My upper part is mostly dry. I'm going to give that a little bit more time and keep on working on this kelp. Just water on my brush right now, softening up some of this stuff over here. Lifting to create some more of those little bubbles. didn't lift very well. I think I'm going to add yet another glaze layer on the top to darken that even more. But it's still a tiny bit damp to the touch, so I'm going to wait a little bit longer because that will let the paint really set more and lift less when I do do that layer. Okay, so how about this bottom left corner? I can work on that as well. Initially I had drawn the coral. I don't know if I want to maintain that still or not. Let's go with yes. I'm not sure what color. Let's start with some of this bronzy color. If I don't like it, I'll just lift it and redo something else. coral tree and I'm just glazing the color in just a glaze of semi-diluted pigment not super intense color right now I'm painting around where her hands are. I don't want to get her fingertips now that I'm starting to work on the finer detail bits. blending this into the background wash stuff. And 
there's a little seashell there. It got lost. I can't remember where the seashell was. I think it's right over here. I'm going to lift a spot for it because that's what she's reaching for. She's reaching down. Oh, there it is. I uncovered it by lifting. <laughs> And I decided I don't like the pink. So I think I'm actually going to paint over it with green. It's too much rainbow in the piece if I have pink there, I think. I'm just glazing over it with blue-green. Leaving little bits of the pink to show through as highlight, that's okay, I think. I just didn't want the pink as the predominant color. gold wet and wet there letting it spread out a little bit in that zone oh yeah I like how that looks I like that better than the pink Thank you. 